to this edition of Able Dead On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've, I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler. Arlene Seiler. And on this program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able in Vermont and beyond, we, we will focus on smoking cessation and what we can do to possibly educate you to quit smoking and the dangers of it. With me to discuss um, these important, with us to discuss this important, these important issues are Lisa Champagne of uh, Central Vermont Medical Center and Bill Fagginger Hour of Washington, Washington County Mental Health. Welcome to Able Dead on Air. Thank, Thank you for you. joining me. Nice. Thank you for join. joining us. What are the missions and goals? Let's start with um, both of you. Both of you can answer this. What are the missions and goals of your programs? How did they, how did they how did they get started and why? Well, as far as the hospital goes, our mission is to serve the needs of um, Central Vermont mm -hmm. and you know health needs. And um, at this point, moving forward, to you know continue to assist people that are still using tobacco. Mm -hmm. You know, numbers have drops throughout the years, mm -hmm. but um, we'd like to see them lower. And, you know, tobacco use is not only smoking, it's also other ways to introduce nicotine into your system, such as oral or even people are vaping now. Mm -hmm. Bill? Um, our program began, um, a smoking cessation program began in uh, January of uh, 2003. Um, and one of the things that we discovered um, among our clients um, was that an extraordinarily high percentage of them were smokers. As a matter of fact, we did a survey in October of 2008 and realized and discovered that 56% of the consumers that we work with are smokers, which if you think about it in terms of the population at large, um, that's probably two to three times higher than the population at large. We did some more recent surveys and discovered that of the 390 consumers of our services that we have currently, that figure is down to 42%, which is a, a fairly significant drop, mm -hmm. but it's also significantly higher than the population at large. Let me, if I could be clear about sort of who we serve. Yes. Um, uh, we provide mental health services to folks in Washington County. Um, the specialized program that I work in um, works with people with diagnoses of schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, major depression, and other uh, major mental health disorders. Mm -hmm. um, and part of the problem that, they, that some of those folks have around nicotine dependency is that um, they tend to smoke cigarettes far more intensely. They tended to start smoking when um, those uh, symptoms were developing in their late teens and early 20s. And, uh, is it due to peer pressure? Is part of it due to that's, peer pressure? That's, it's, I'm glad you asked that. That's a significant part of it. Um, for a lot of folks that we work with, um, some of their smoking habit developed when they were in the old Vermont State Hospital, you know, or when they were living in group homes um, in this community or in other places. Um, one of the things that happens is that um, that group of folks that we work with are extraordinarily high um, incidence of smokers and that behavioral thing is just constantly reinforcing. So that's also mm. one of the primary problems in mm. terms of helping yeah. them stop. Is it like pressure from their friends? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, they, they get together and let's go outside and have a cigarette. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Peer now, pressure. Now, I wanna, we want to ask both of you this uh, question here. It says, um, well, it, it says here, well, part of your statistics, yep. um, it says, um, that your clients uh, are are at risk for dying 25 years or younger yes. than the general population. Yes, yes. Um, do you think tobacco companies, now I know tobacco companies have, some of them have been sued, yep. like Philip Morris and some others, yep. um, because of the lies that they've been telling people. Yes. How has that, has that changed? Um, or, or has um, has that become an issue with you know because smoking causes death right because right. of lung cancer lung right. cancer right so 
Yeah, lung and emphysema, and does the, as an yeah, yeah, cancer, the emphysema, heart disease. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I think your program was helped as well by some of the tobacco settlement money. Oh, it has been. That yes. happened um, in the early part of mm -hmm. you know, the 2000s. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, yeah. and that money helped a lot in terms of developing our respective programs. Mm -hmm. So the Vermont Quit Partners, um, they're throughout the whole state of Vermont. Yes. Um, and our Quit programs are offered in each hospital service area. We each um, cover certain counties. Um, so, you know, I offer tobacco cessation workshops um, on campus at CVMC. We also try to bring them out to the community. Mm -hmm. um, and You, you know, go to people's homes and have sessions there? We or? are not able to go to their homes, but we're able to go to, you know, employment sites. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, we've held workshops in libraries. Um, we could do it at a church. Mm -hmm. um, you know, employers, places. Now let's talk about the cost for a minute because a pack of cigarettes, mm -hmm. depending mm -hmm. on the brand, right. whether it be, okay, we can, you know, it's free speech, so we can mention, whether it be Marlboro, Camel, right? Mm -hmm. They go between seven to eight dollars a pack. Mm -hmm. right. but. When you talk get it, having a carton of cigarettes, that's when you get into the money right. aspect. $150, $200. People, <laughs> when, when you have to feed your family, you're taking money out of your children's mouths. Yes. You're, you're, you're feeding the habit. It's and not feeding your family. Yeah, right. so it's, it's, it's an expensive habit. It's an expensive habit. Talk expensive. a little bit about, has that changed? Has that gotten a little better? Because you still have the patches and you have other right, ways of gum. quitting smoking. But right. how, how has the cost skyrocketed? Uh, uh, well, I think one of the things that we've seen over the years is that the taxes on cigarette products have mm -hmm. increased substantially. Um, is that tobacco and alcohol as well? Uh, I'm talking primarily about tobacco okay. in, in this mm -hmm. case. Um, and one of the things that I think is, is interesting is that from what I understand, the information I've seen is the cost of producing a pack of cigarettes by a tobacco company is about four cents or six cents. I mean, it's not very... Per piece of cigarette. Per no, I'm talking about what it costs to on the line and put it in the truck. Oh, So what I'm okay. saying is that the balance of the money that, that people pay for a pack of cigarettes is largely um, based on taxes and profits to tobacco companies. Mm -hmm. um, but Notwithstanding that, and I think more specific to your question, most of the people that I work with are on fixed incomes. They're getting Social Security disability. Uh, they may have some small jobs on the side, but they have limited income. And there is no question about the fact that if they are smoking, um, let's say, a carton a week, and that's costing $100, and because uh, yeah. it's not unusual for people to smoke a pack, a pack and a third, you know, a day, um, but if they're spending three or four hundred dollars a month mm -hmm. out of let's say seven or eight hundred dollars that they're paying, now they may be getting Section Eight and other kinds of health care benefits. But the point is that's the single largest cost, mm -hmm. and it squeezes out food and it squeezes out virtually everything else. Yeah. And and their health, I think, um, suffers largely as a result of that. Mm -hmm. I think when you're smoking, you're not exercising. When you're smoking, you're not watching your diet. Um, and, uh, and people, um, uh, some of the data that we've seen indicates that they're dying 15 to 25 years earlier. Their life expectancy mm -hmm. is that much less than the population at large. Yeah. Um, what do you, you think of those e-cigarettes now? Well, I think that e-cigarettes have been sold with the idea that this is uh, like any other form of nicotine replacement therapy, and it's not. No, um, no, it's not. They're not, they're not approved by the Food and Drug Administration, and I think my so experience... Being, I apologize. For that's right. Being the factor that's not approved by the Smoking and Drug Administration, does that make it more dangerous? Well, I think that they're suggesting that it's, it's not useful in terms of if it's being sold as a uh, as as a way of stopping smoking i mean i think that's that's ludicrous 
But, but there's um, other harmful chemicals in those units, yeah. and um, like what, for example? Whatever the the vape, the vape. What is yeah? Oh, you mentioned, va what, you've what, mentioned yeah. vaping, the and I is, don't know. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. A lot of them have they have batteries in them, or they have some sort of chemical that creates a, a vapor, um, and they're uh, ingesting that. And yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That's you know harmful. Nicotine and yeah. yeah. Um, they have no idea how much um, nicotine they're receiving in these mm -hmm. devices, and you know there's proven products out there that are available: patches, gum, lozenges. You know within my program. Um, they're free if people, you know, attend the workshops. Um, most insurances are covering Medicaid covers most um, of it. Yeah. Those mm -hmm. products and prescription products to help them. Quit. Does insurance do pay for your pro? Like, okay, for example, if I was on a certain insurance and I wanted to get, and we wanted to get service, mm -hmm. uh, a counseling. Mm -hmm. it, it's considered counseling, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Would insurance pay for my our programs are free free if you oh. attend our programs we're able to assist you with free product patches gum lozenges mm -hmm. um you know you come in we get you you signed up um support mm -hmm. you know group setting um you know information mm -hmm. uh trying to help people with their barriers and free product gets shipped to their mm -hmm. house how, how, how long mm. does it take usually for a person to quit? I uh, mean, well, to go, go cold turkey. <coughs> it varies. <coughs> you know, it, it's an individual plan. It varies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I look at it as if they even come once, we've planted a seed. If they've come once to one of our sessions, we've planted a seed. They may not quit that given day or within, you know, four weeks, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, their goal ideally is to quit. Um, you, Our group is um, open-ended, mm -hmm. um, which we, means what? what? Which means that somebody can come to a group any time, mm -hmm. and they can mm -hmm. come to as many groups as they want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have some people who come time after time, week in and week out. Part of the reason for that is that a lot of our folks, as I said earlier, are very dependent on nicotine. And so they will stop smoking for a while, and they'll relapse, and then they'll stop smoking for a while, and they'll relapse or they'll very slowly reduce the amount of cigarettes that they're smoking every day. We have people who continue to come to group um, years after they've stopped smoking for ongoing support. And it's also extraordinarily helpful that they're there because I think it shows for those who are really struggling with stopping smoking, <laughs> it is possible to do. Now, now, just so I can reiterate, your program in Washington County right. is only for Clients, clients that of are getting County Mental Health so Services. yes yeah. so Bill's program for those that are watching uh, Bill's program is only for people who uh, are getting services through Washington County that's correct okay yes. and your program is for the public absolutely okay yes. now my my qu our question is this um, the chewing tobacco yeah. Okay, chewing tobacco, snuff, as it's called, I think, yeah, snuff. Um, a lot of the, talking about, a little bit about the history, um, Major League Baseball players used to right. chew that mm -hmm. during national anthem, during breaks, um, and they spit, they sometimes spit out blood, it gets nasty, and you, and you get mouth cancer from it. Um, is that more dangerous uh, some tobacco products when you actually chew it is it more dangerous than a cigarette or vice versa it's all dangerous all dangerous yeah, yeah. but it ha so it has the same chemicals right Excuse me. as a cigarette itself mm -hmm. well there's higher incidence isn't there you know probably know this better than i do of mouth cancers right mm -hmm. for those who are using chew or um, smokeless tobacco. They call it skull. That's the yeah, name yes, of the. It's the oral right. cancer, yeah, yeah, yeah. and right. you'll find that nowadays dentists actually will, during your, you know, your annual exams or biannual, um, they'll check for oral cancer, which is great. Mm -hmm. you know? um, yeah. yeah, but so it, so it's all one. You get cancer the same way, Cigar, it doesn't matter. Cigarettes, chew, it's, it's, it's not like there is a version of nicotine or nicotine products that's less dangerous than the others. It's, mm -hmm. it's also equally. Now, how does the patch work? Um, 
the patch is something you slap on, mm -hmm. and you slap it on every day, mm -hmm. and it comes in um, what three levels? Different uh, milligram strains. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it it's medication that's it going is. into yeah. your arm. It's nicotine. Right. It replaces um, what you know. If a person's quitting. They're giving up nicotine, you know, abruptly, and so it's. It's a way to continue to have the nicotine, but not, you know, the other harmful effects from the cigarette or the chew. And um, it delivers nicotine in a constant dose. Um, they put a patch on every day, mm -hmm. and a um, new patch on every day. Mm -hmm. um, gradually, they start to, you know, lower their doses and wean themselves off of the patch. In terms of now, let's go back. In terms of all the money spent mm -hmm. okay what was a what, what was one of the reasons why they had the um, that lawsuit between the tobacco companies um, was it is it because they were telling wrongful truths to people or how did how was that working with the net with the public because in terms of quitting smoking Right, which is really important, and that's why we're here to get people to quit. Um, you know, so they know the dangers of um, tobacco. Right. What was the um, reason behind? I mean, certainly one impression that I've had is that um, the single um, healthcare choice that you can make mm -hmm. um, that will affect your longevity and your resistance to disease is to decide or not to decide whether to smoke or not. So accordingly, um, if you think about treatment for heart disease or you think about treatment for lung cancer or you think about treatment for emphysema, um, that's a lot of health care cost. Yeah. And certainly this state and certainly Medicaid, Medicare costs, you know, were, were very significant. And I think one of the reasons that the state's uh, banded together to sue the tobacco companies back mm -hmm. in the early 2000s was they needed some help in recovering some of those costs. You know, it was, you know, tobacco companies were making the profit and the states were left holding the bag in terms of the health care costs. And so I think that was a big part of it. Um, that's my understanding. Mm -hmm. Do you know anything mm -hmm. further about I, that, Lisa? I agree with Bill. Yeah. And if you look at the package of, of cigarettes, it will, there's a warning on there, you know, that potentially can cause cancer and, you know, there's health risk. And it does exactly what it says. Mm -hmm. um, what are your future goals with your programs and how do you see your programs going in, into long term? Both of you? Well, one, one of the things, I'm sorry, I keep stepping go ahead, in here. Go ahead, uh, go ahead. No, I think one of the, it, it's interesting in, ter in terms of some of the, the policy changes that have happened over the years. And one of the things that I wanted to mention was that, and this hasn't come up here so far, is the whole idea that there are lots of areas, um, you know, public spaces and communities, restaurants, um, yeah. um, lots of places, including healthcare organizations, including public housing organizations. The buildings have started to become more smoke free. Where smoking is prohibited, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you live in a um, um, subsidized housing, um, in a um, uh, public housing situation, um, you can't smoke in that house. You can't smoke in your apartment. Or, or in terms of, because uh, I've done culinary, so I've worked in kitchens. Yep. You're not allowed to right. smoke. If you smoke, you have to smoke within 25 feet mm -hmm. yep. of right. that establishment. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's only been within the, we started in 2014, we finished the policy in 2015, but Washington County Mental Health has numerous programs across, you know, Washington County and Barry, Montpelier, Waterbury, et cetera. And one of the things that mm -hmm. um, one of the things that's, that that's that we've nice. done is we've established a smoke-free campus. And mm -hmm. the purpose of that is we're basically making a statement that smoking is unhealthy, and that we want to encourage you to stop smoking. Mm -hmm. Real quick, um, did you want to ask a question? Um, yeah, ahead. smoking has been you know very expensive, and you know. People smoke because it's a bad habit, and they, they, they don't want it, they smoke, but they... Are they stopping smoking in restaurants? 
completely, no, completely, completely. I don't completely, believe there's any completely. restaurant that allows right, right. smoking. Because I, I know in New York they stopped it. They stopped yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I think in Vermont you can. And you're finding that. a lot more public places. In yeah. hospitals yeah. too, I guess. Yes. Because yeah, no yeah. I see the workers smoke outside. No smoking, but you know, there's a new piece that's kind of getting out there. You know, the the e-cigarettes and that's right. yeah, yeah, some yeah. publicity. You know, how how do they? You know, determine is it, it's not really a cigarette. No, it's and, not really. So it's not. It's giving off a vape that is yeah, yeah. unhealthy. So mm -hmm. I hope kids are not picking up the teenagers. And, oh, yeah. The worst. And, and moving forward, you know, you know, the programs are out there to decrease, you know, tobacco use. People don't sometimes don't look at tobacco use as people that use oral tobacco either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what is the smoking age we're here building, in Vermont? Where we live in still comes smoking soon, smoke free. 18, 20, yeah. oh, okay, 18 to buy cigarettes, 21 to buy liquor, but. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're looking to change the um, age to 21. I, I think in New York they did that. They raised yeah. the age to 21 because mm -hmm. if you get caught, <laughs> they, they would now, fine what are you. Now, what are the misconceptions of, With the fine teenagers, of yeah. um, well, the misconceptions as far as smoking, oh, you know, because years ago, in terms of commercials and product placement, oh, um, for example, uh, cartoons, you would see a cartoon with a cigarette, right. you know, cigar, cigarette, Flintstones, for example. Oh, Selling these Western movies that smoke the Cowboys. The Cowboys, yeah, right. uh, yeah. John yeah. Wayne yeah. would smoke. Uh, the Marlboro Man. Oh, Marlboro yeah. Man. Oh, so a what, is your, any, what is your take on how we'll media, smoke, smoke it, yeah. what is your take on how media places cigarettes or, or mis, is misleading people? What is your take on well, that? Well, I think we've seen over the years considerably less um, advertising for um, tobacco products. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it, it, it's off of television. You don't hear it on the radios um, as much. It, right. I think there are there. Can, I don't think you find tobacco advertising much in uh, magazines and newspapers and that kind of stuff. I think that a lot of my, and it's interesting because I don't think that we're fully conscious of, of sort of where it is. I think there's still, um, you know, if you go into uh, places that, that sell tobacco products, there's, there's ads and stuff in there. But I think by and large they're off the, um, you know, you don't see them too much on, on the media much anymore. Um, uh, what is your take on how media um, plays a I part? I think there's so much education out there about the bad effects of tobacco use. Just it's not it's not out it's not up front anymore. Mm -hmm. There are some organizations sometimes that will work with different stores, even in this area, yeah. uh, Central Vermont New Directions. Yeah. Um, you know, they'll what have is New Directions? Central Vermont New Directions. They're here in Montpelier. That's a what is it? Uh, they work with um, substance abuse, alcohol, uh, tobacco, mm -hmm. um, and they have worked with some local stores. You know, so they're. The upfront advertising for tobacco is not right up front, you know. Mm -hmm. And some of the stores are willing to, you know, buy into it. And and I think um, was it CVS that no longer sells? Yeah, yeah, CVS, 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 no, CVS, yeah, no, CVS no, no, no longer no. It, it's happening, and, and I think you. I it's guess the never other. I guess, go back. I guess the other one will follow. You know. it, 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 we're going to move forward with this, but mm. a lot of the tobacco companies they find new ways to market different products that appeal to people and the youth, and you know, hopefully we can keep the youth away from these. Yeah. Products. Last, last, uh, mm. last main question before we end: lung cancer, right? Mm. Uh, it's a big thing. Smoking uh, can cause fires. You well, fall asleep. Yeah, oh, yeah. And you fall asleep. The, 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 there's two, yeah, two other yeah. questions. Dangers of, let's start with this one. Dangers with smoking. It, like you, there's been cases smoke. people fall asleep while the cigarette is burning, different yep. things. How do you deal with those issues? But then, more importantly, lung cancer is a biggie. Yeah. Right. When my father was smoking, before he died, the doctor showed him an x-ray of his lungs. Black lung, right. not so black lung. How long 
Mother, is the you, process, how long is the process with lung cancer? Like, how long will it take for a person to, if, if you smoke every day, constantly, years and years and years and years, no matter if it's a pipe or a cigar, how long does it take to a person to get really sick? I, I couldn't answer that question. You couldn't answer and that I question? And I do think it's very individual. It just depends. And, and emphysema is usually the beginning yeah, of somebody, emphysema. Yeah. And yeah. lung functioning is a pretty early indicator that people yeah. are starting to have problems. You know? Yeah, breathing. Yeah. Exactly. You know? And what's interesting is that, I don't know whether this is your experience, but my experience is people start coming to my group when they recognize that their health is being compromised. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're having problems breathing. They're experiencing some symptoms. And... That's at the, the, usually the first point at which they've got to figure out whether they're going to stop or not. Well, okay, um, the other question as far as dangers, yeah. like how, I mean, obviously some people should know not to sleep yeah. Uh, yeah. with an ashtray yeah. near an open mattress, yeah. but it does happen. Well, one of the things I, I really want to bring up, and we haven't mentioned it, is the whole idea of secondhand smoke. You know, uh, yeah, yes. that's what so people, other people can catch, other people can right. catch it. You know, and, and the vulnerability that our children have, the vulnerability that babies have um, yeah. to, uh, you know, increased levels of disease, colds, um, pulmonary problems as a result of having smokers yeah, yeah, in the household. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's in a lot of, for a lot of reasons, that's kind of why, you know, in public places, you know, smoking is prohibited because you're at risk if you go by. Now, you know, it's, I think it's, it's, it's a point of contention. It's, you know, how much smoke do you have to, um, you know, breathe in from somebody else before you're subject to uh, disease? But I think that, you know, it's kind of like zoning in Vermont. You know, most of us, you know, put up fences because we have good neighbors. And I think some of this is really about what's our behavior going to be like in the, in the public, in the community, you know, because we don't want to put other, our neighbors, the other people that we live with at risk. And so that's why there's such an emphasis, I think, today on, you know, how do we manage secondhand smoke and, and yeah. what do we do to, to make how it does your How does your program deal with the secondhand smokers? Do they have a specific oh, program that, for them? That, that becomes part of a topic sometimes, you know, as far as the ones that come that are smokers, you know, dealing with the partners that are always nagging them. Um, and you know you, you you're finding also that uh, public housing is not allowing right. tobacco. Yeah, well use we live. And they're gonna stop it in July. Yeah, because yeah. people have been smoking. And and they're gonna stop it completely. Sometimes you can't even smoke twenty-five feet from you know. It's yeah, they want them, they want a certain amount of feet away from the property. Cost, right. The cost. Yeah. You know, for liability. Also, when somebody moves out of that place, it's like thousands of dollars by the time they repaint, and sometimes they have to you know deal with the ductwork and the heating system because that secondhand smoke has, you know, traveled through there. And there's something also called third hand. Um, and what it is is the residue, wherever the smoke is going and lying, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, there's chemicals Gets on your there. clothes also. You Animals, you know, dog. lay yeah, yeah. on yeah. the furniture or the yeah. carpet and, you know, they clean themselves so they ingest it. Um, you know, little babies. If you have that nicotine and smoke residue, you yeah. know, wherever, yeah. they can absorb that through their skin because it's just so fragile. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to tell you something that one person walked into their office one day. He, this happened in Montpelier. She's on the side of the street waiting to cross the mm -hmm. crosswalk. A um, car goes by, and somebody flicks their cigarette out of the window. Repeat that one more time, sir. Say oh that one more time. Okay. Um, this woman was on the side of the road here in Montpelier, waiting for traffic to clear to cross the crosswalk. A car goes by and a smoker throws their cigarette butt out the window, still oh, God. lit, and uh, a fire. hit the baby <gasps> on the underside of the <gasps> eye lid. Oh my and God! Thank God it didn't hit their eye. And, you know, there was just a little mark, but even at that, you know, <gasps> there's so many dangers out there. Mm -hmm. Did they put the fire out? So, you know. There was no, there was no fire. No, they just but, hit know, the baby. just hit, hit yeah. the baby's just skin and burnt that, that child. Ooh. Mm -hmm. um, I hope they catch the driver. And it's not just that, you know, if the cigarette butts are on the ground, all those kinds of Yeah, yeah, I see the, the garbage. The you see the volunteer garbage pickers out? They pick up all that, a bunch of cigarettes off so the, off the, the floor. that's the third hand part. Oh, mm -hmm. God. Tobacco use. Well, they shouldn't have done that. That's we would, stupid. We would like to thank you 
for joining us well, you're quite on this welcome. edition Thank you. of Able Done On Air. Um, for more information on Vermont Quit Partners, which is part of Central Vermont Medical Center, you can reach you can reach Lisa Champagne at l i s a dot champagne c h a m p a g n e at c v m c dot org, or reach her at eight zero two 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 five five six eight zero. That's two two five five six eight zero. And is there a number? To reach, um, yes, I can be reached through. I work here in Montpelier at Heaton Street, and mm -hmm. my number is two two three six three two eight. Okay, and I'm the only bill in the building, so <laughs> I'd be happy to answer any questions. And <laughs> just, just as a reminder, uh, um, Bill's program is only for people um, who are getting services through Washington County Mental Health, and. Um, while this program is airing in May, this is a, a couple, in a couple of days is Memorial Day, and let's um, bow our heads uh, for a couple minutes of silence for our men and women in the armed forces. Well, that wraps up this edition of Abled and On Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Marlon Seiler. See you next time.